Coming up on Mountain News this morning, nationwide protests against racial inequality make their way to eastern Kentucky. This as the chief of Kentucky's largest police department is fired after a deadly shooting at Sunday's protests. Dedicated to eastern and southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Lacey Roberts, and thank you for joining us here on Mountain News this morning. Today is Tuesday, June 2nd, or like we call it here, Monday 2.0, and those temperatures yesterday were nice, but as Brandon has been telling us all morning, it's going to be a scorcher outside today, and I, for one, am ready for that heat. Bring it on. What's up, Brandon? That makes one of us, Lacey. I've never been a fan of the heat and humidity, but we have to take it because it's getting close to that time of the year. So maybe I'll just stay inside with the air conditioning today. Let's see what's going on this morning across the region. And you see US 119, US 23. Not too bad this morning. Pretty quiet. A few clouds across parts of the region. Those should clear fairly quickly as we head deeper into the daytime hours. 50s down south, 60s in the north. So again, much warmer than it was this time yesterday. And here's a factor that we're going to have to continue to watch. Now, you see a lot of zeros on this map. That's wind speed. But look at the direction it's coming from. It's pulling all this warmer air out of the south. It's coming basically straight up. So that means it's coming from the south. So that means it's going to bring some of that warmer air off of the Gulf of Mexico, off of some of those other bodies of water. So we're going to keep an eye on that today as it drives our temperatures up into the mid to maybe even upper 80s, forecasting 87. And we'll see warm conditions, more humidity today. But overall, still a fairly quiet pattern as we head deeper into the week here in this first week of June. We'll have the extended forecast coming up here in just a little bit. Lacey. Thank you, Brandon. Louisville Metro Police Chief Steve Conrad announced last month that he would be, reti we would be retiring at the end of June. But after deadly shootings overnight into Monday morning following days of protests, the mayor said that he had to go now. Shelby Smithson has those details. Shots fired, shots fired. Building on the northwest side. A chaotic scene early Monday morning. You can see people scatter in the real time crime center video. We took fire from the small building. We have people barricaded inside that building. And here moves made by Louisville Metro police officers in the police radio transmissions. Both were released Monday, but the point of view you won't see is from a body worn camera. As I learned about some of the details of what happened last night. I learned that the body cameras of the officers present were not activated. This type of institutional failure will not be tolerated. Mayor Fisher and Acting Chief of Police Rob Schroeder say it was that failure that leaves lingering questions about what exactly happened, specifically like who actually shot David McAtee. We do not know if it was related to a separate incident, if it was due to the shots fired by our officers, and the National Guardsmen and soldiers that accompanied them. What they do know is their community is demanding Are answers, taking to the streets Are again Monday free? night for protests with yet another name to chant. All I could do is express uh, the deepness of sorrow that I have and my commitment to get to the truth again. LMPD officers Katie Cruz and Austin Allen have been placed on administrative leave. Kentucky Attorney General Daniel Cameron responded last night to the death of David McAtee, calling it a, quote, incredibly difficult and heartbreaking day for the black community. Cameron called for a stop to violence while investigators seek answers in McAtee's death. He went on to say, quote, you have my word. The truth will be known and the rule of law upheld. And a Louisville Metro police officer seen on camera firing pepper balls at a news reporter and photographer has been reassigned until an investigation is complete. The officer's name has not been released. The pepper balls were fired directly at a Wave 3 news crew who were reporting on the protest Friday night. Wave's general manager said in a statement, quote, there is simply no justification for the Louisville police to wantly open fire on any journalist under any circumstances, end quote.
and an act of kindness in Louisville as some of the protesters began to turn violent over the weekend. Protester Darren Lee was trying to make his way home when he spotted an officer who was separated from his squad. Lee saw that he seemed lost and nervous as a crowd gathered around the man. So Lee and several other strangers linked arms, protecting the officer from the crowd. I think he learned at that point um, not all protesters or not all uh, black people are bad people. We don't all have a hate for the police. We just want to see change. We just want to see justice. The group was able to escort the officer unharmed back to his squad. Lee said the officer thanked them for their efforts. And as anger over the divide between police and the African-American community boils over into violence across many parts of the country, people here in the mountains are making their voices heard. Several peaceful protests are taking place across southeastern Kentucky this week. And as a national spotlight shines on those protests in Louisville and across the country, groups gathered peacefully here in eastern Kentucky to join the cause. WYMT's Will Puckett was in Paintsville last night and has more. Paintsville Mayor Bill Mike Runyon's message from the start was simple. It's just one of those things that you've got to allow people to protest peacefully. And that's the key word, is peacefully. Uh, and as long as they do that, then I'm fine with it. Oh God, we ask that you would Monday night, a group of more than 50 people gathered to march in downtown Paintsville. I didn't feel like I could sit here and not do anything. Um, this country is facing a really big problem where black people are constantly being targeted by the police um, and killed. Um, black people make up 24% of police murders, but only 13% of the population, and clearly something is wrong. Andre Faria is the event organizer. He says that bringing Eastern Kentuckians together to fight against racial injustice is important to show they are listening to. Here in Eastern Kentucky, there's a stereotype that everyone's racist and everyone doesn't care. And I like really think it's important that we show that we do care and that everywhere around this country, people are caring and people are listening to black voices. No peace! No peace! Voices like that of Katie Wells, who joined the march Monday evening, carrying a sign that reads, you don't know my story. A lot of the stuff I've been seeing online is people just trying to like pretend that they know the black experience and like gaslight the black experience. But it's like, you, you can't understand. Don't shoot! Don't shoot! Wells hope that marches like Mondays and ones happening peacefully across the country help to show there's work that still needs to be done. You don't want to be angry, but you're tired of just being quiet and being like silent about it and pretending like it doesn't bother you. So sometimes you just have to speak up. And so I decided this is probably the best way. I can't breathe! I can't breathe! Passing along stories to those who will listen and showing that if there's cooperation from both sides, actions like this can get the message across. In Paintsville, Will Puckett, WYMT Mountain News. Faria added that scenes like this one in larger cities and messages spread on social media drive the point behind Monday's peaceful protest even further. And people gathered at City Park in Pikeville for a peaceful protest rally for grief, empowerment, and anti-racist transformation. Many people spoke from public officials to chaplains, therapists, and African Americans in the community. The night ended with people walking Homley Boulevard chanting Black Lives Matter. WYMT's Emily Bennett was there last night and has more. We're going to um, educate people the best way we can. Uh, we're going to let people know what's the, um, the meaning of Black Lives Matter. We're going to let them know who Breonna Taylor was out of Louisville um, and George Floyd in their lives and what they did. Mm -hmm. Why was George Floyd killed? Let me show you. $20. Racism is a product of a system to get you to live for this and worship this. Black lives do matter, but it really starts with white people helping to talk to their racist friends, their racist family, that it's time for a change. That's all we're here for. It's time for a change. All these pain that we're going through, my brothers and sisters that are going through, Y'all have a responsibility to stand up for them. 
So do what you can do best. Raise your voice. Pikeville, who are you? What is the next headline about Appalachia? Was that Appalachia is leading the country in anti-racist work? That we are committed to transforming our communities, and that we are the first place that took action, and we took action with the most urgency. This is a small town, and you figure it'd be the most racist. But the police has not bothered me, so I have nothing against the police down here. This is awesome. I'm trying to keep from crying. Black Lives Matter! What's my name? What's my name? No justice! The event lasted about two hours, and the peace, it was peaceful the entire time. Another protest it also happened last night downtown in Corbin. It started at 6 o'clock at Sanders Park, and the group organizing the demonstration demanded that the protesters remain peaceful. And some people in Harlan County also plan to gather tonight at 4 p.m. The peaceful protest will take place on the bypass strip above Huddle House. Organizers say it is to raise small town awareness of the deaths of Breonna Taylor, George Floyd and Ahmaud Aubrey. Organizers say that masks are mandatory. For any protests will be going on later today, they want to make sure they stay hydrated because it's going to be a hot day across the region and we're going to see those temperatures climb quickly. We're seeing already 50s and 60s this morning, this afternoon mid to upper 80s. So again, just kind of keep an eye out for that. Any outdoor activities and look at the temperature change already from this time yesterday morning to this time this morning, anywhere between 9 and 16 to 20 degrees warmer than it was this time yesterday. Remember, we were in the 40s yesterday morning. Plenty of sunshine today. We warm up quickly as hazy hot and humid conditions return and then scattered chances for showers and storms also will return later into the week. Lacey. Thank you, Brandon. And thank you for getting your day started with us here on Mountain News this morning. More news is on the way. Coming up, yesterday marked day one of the New Atlantic hurricane season, but we're already on track to break those meteorological records.